create a reveal, kind of like a dripping wax very easily and quickly inside of here. Not with the liquid sim, but just with the volume builder. And then you can obviously combine a liquid sim on top of this to create an even cooler effect, start layering them together. Uh, but I'll just show you how to do this quick reveal. It's very simple and easy. This chip bag is an asset from the asset browser. It's not behind the max on one paywall, so you do have access to it. Uh, but yeah, we've got a jelly bag. And what we want to do with this jelly bag is just make a copy of it. Is first you need to right click it and connect objects and delete so that it becomes one object. Because by default, it's like two things. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that and then copy and paste it. So what we're going to do is just hide one for right now. Actually, no. We're going to copy and paste it because we're going to use one to drive the volume builder and one to obviously be the original object. Um, so what we can do now, obviously this looks way cooler with stuff like buildings and things uh, that have a lot of detail, hard surface modeled into them. This will look really cool with that. And so we can mess with that here in a minute. But let's just go ahead and start with this. Uh, so what we want to do is just create a volume builder. Take that jelly bag, put it in the volume builder. Make it really small based on your scale, like 0.2 probably for this one. Then we're going to need to add a smoothing and then also a dilate. And we'll go ahead and do like 0.25 for the offset. Just a little bit there, maybe just kind of, if you see you start scaling it up, it gets kind of too big. Uh, swap these two around, so put the dilate before the smooth. There we go. So maybe just like 0.5. Cool. Obviously, by default, uh, this isn't very good. Uh, we need to go ahead and add the volume measure. Hold Alt, put that in there. So now we have like this, you know, material showing up on top of our bag. And we just need this to like reveal on so how do we do that well pretty straightforward and simple we just need to create an object that is bigger than our bag and what we're going to do is just kind of create some dynamicness to it so go ahead and hit 64 for that sphere and then we're going to go ahead and add a displacement uh, on top of that whoops beneath that i mean and go ahead and change the sphere type to noise and go in here and we can start like lowering the scale down or raising the scale up, whatever we want, but just we want to create kind of that effect that we're going for. We want more detail, so we're going to switch it to FBM, but we're going to need to go ahead and add like way more in here. We're going to change this to, we're going to change our sphere to tetrahedron, and we're going to increase the segments to like 150. It's not like perfectly simple, but totally fine. We just want to be able to grab this noise and start messing with the scale. So we get it kind of smooth without it being kind of crazy. So something like that, right? So we just need this blob uh, with these kind of organic details and things cut out of it. And again, you can just start increase the segments, increase the, you know, just play around with the displacement until you get it how you want. Now we take this, throw it in the volume builder. And inside of here, we make sure that is beneath everything. And we just switch this to subtract. And now we can animate our sphere where we could just be beneath. And it comes on and look at that. It looks just like liquid is coming on to our object or growing on there. So obviously, you know, scaling this will affect it. You can do a reveal, you could do like a see-through thing, but yeah. The main thing is you wanna make sure that you are covering it up at the start and then revealing it like that. And obviously adding those smaller details will give it more organic chisel here and you can start layering things in on top of this as well if we start getting smaller here you'll see we get a lower effect like so more detail this doesn't really matter if the sphere is like that good looking because all that's going to matter is where it's coming in like that so that looks cool now let's go ahead and take this and elevate it a bit we'll grab a material throw it on there and this is just kind of a metal material with just kind of an orange metal to kind of match it. Metalness up, refraction, nothing too fancy, right? But let's go ahead and add some details to this beyond just like a bum map. Because if we could, we could come in here with a hit C, type in noise, grab a max on noise, and just add our own bum map on top of this. So, and then maybe animate it, make it 0.1 with a loop period of 90. And let's go ahead and stretch out the stretch out the Y a bit so it's like kind of long. There we go. And hit C, type in bump, plug that in. Boop. If I can drop that in. There we go. Boom, 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 boom. And that's kind of a simple-ish effect. We do need to set this to be cubic after that. There we go. And so now, you know, when we play, we'll get kind of this moving effect. 
but it's, you know, it's faking it with uh, the bump map, which is fine. But we can actually add an actual real detail to this by going to create, going over to field, and then going over to like random field. You can use a shader field, you can drive it with imagery, whatever you want. And we're just going to drag this and plop it into here. And we want to grab this random field, put it above our sphere, and we need to make sure the creation space of this is not this little box here, but actually the shape beneath, so the objects below. And that is going to make that uh, react on top of this. So just for the sake of demonstration, let's take the bump off. So all we'll see is the random field coming in here. So we can take this random field and switch it to like FBM and lower it down. And you can see we start getting this kind of nice organic wobble on top of it. And again, we can go back to the volume builder inside of here. And this is set like that. We can dilate it to be uh, smaller. So we get a little more detail. And then this random field, we can start to chop our way at it, like mess with the min and max. So if you want that to kind of smooth in there a little bit, you can go to your field here and you could try, you know, see if you like the way it looks with these different settings, the intersection points. But I think union is going to be the best. And then you can come in here and right click and type in like 0.1. And that's going to kind of smooth that between the two. And basically now we have like the surface threshold and we can kind of adjust that to be like how noisy we want this noise to affect it. And this is kind of like adding a displacement on our volume mesh, but driving it with the random field, which is good because now we could take that random field and animate it so we could do like 20 percent speed here loop period of 90 again and hit back and hit play and now we get this more kind of organic gloop where it's like kind of moving on top of it which is nice and we can speed that up and change that and adjust the scale of it to whatever you want make it more detailed whatever right but we'll leave it there and so now all we have to do is just use this sphere to drive this so we can you know start it a little bigger like so keyframe it here and this is just the sphere and then you know go down and it's gonna go like that boom and so now we have this gold drip applying on top of our shape kind of cool and so you could come in and start layering in different things into here we could turn off the smoothing if you think you need more of that uh, i think smoothing can be turned down like really low and then we're going to see a lot more of that noise uh, coming in here. So we can use this random field and you can start controlling the amount of that noise with that. Here we have this coming in. Cool. So let's just take this exact same principle, um, but apply it to something larger, right? Um, yeah. So let's go ahead and just showcase like something that has a little more detail, like a building like they do in the old, like this building here. Boom. We'll put that right there. Uh, we'll just scale it down. Boom. And obviously, we just drop that into here. Uh, we get rid of the jelly bag. And now, you know, we kind of have the same thing, but we do need to reorder it here. It's kind of annoying that the order here doesn't match the order here, but there we go. All right, let's get the jelly bag out of here. And so now, you know, we have this kind of building here that we can animate uh, coming on. We just need the actual building to be up here in the way, like so, okay. So now, you know, we get that cool effect. We change it from orange to red, to kind of this deep red. There we go. We can put the noise back on the bump. And now combining all those things together, we get kind of this cool building drip effect, right? pretty cool so you can just you know shift it around and obviously this you know the more detail you need the just smaller the voxel size you need to go so 0.05 might be the way to go and part of that's going to come down to the smoothing part of that's going to come down to the dilate because you can make it real detailed here it's probably fine honestly like that and then we can just hit play and it should just look like it's drawing on So obviously, you know, the more detail you have, the longer it's going to take. But it's a pretty cool effect, and you don't have to mess with particles or anything. But you could still add particles on top, but this does look pretty good. 
So, I mean, but that's basically it. I mean, you just toss in whatever you want, like this cool Daredevil mask, and then you kind of realign and reanimate and mess around with the scale. And you can do it with multiple objects. You can do it with its own. I would say probably the easiest way to do it would be like, well, this is probably the easiest way to do it. This is the easiest way to do it probably, but you definitely don't have to do it this way. You can use a linear field. You can use whatever you want. You don't have to like use you know, big, chunky, displaced objects to do it. It just kind of works well. Bleh. See, just gives it this dripping effect, which is quite cool. Pretty cool. Now, you know, you do lose a little detail. So what if we make a copy of it? Right? Can we make a copy of it and scale it up? This is from Sketchfab, and this is dope, by the way. Uh, and then toss that back into the volume builder, like on top of everything, uh, as like an intersect. Maybe like here. And then we put the dilate beneath that and make it like 0.1. Ooh, point two. I feel like I'm on to something here. Uh, two iterations. Yeah. So now we're able to keep a lot more of that detail in here. So we put the same thing back into it. So again, without it, you know, we have the effect, but we don't have the detail. We toss it back in. We have that detail back in there. So I just tossed it back into itself, scaled up a little bit. And uh, I think we've created a pretty cool, pretty cool effect here. And we can, of course, you know, keep messing around with the scale of this noise, but also in the volume builder, the um, the actual like surface threshold, like how much of this do we want it to kind of chunk away and stuff, you know, like. Yeah. And then on top of that, you know, you could obviously bake that as an alembic if you wanted, but use that to also like create particles from, I don't know, it's just kind of a fun idea. I mean, obviously you could then come in and add particles to this or tracers on top of particles on matrix objects and have all kinds of things growing. And you could even do multiple things where you have a cloner create voxel squares and start like combining all these things like the Tron Aries trailer where the guy kind of forms, but also um, the cubes go and the lines go. You can do all these things and just layer them together. And it's just kind of cool to be able to do all this in uh, C4D. And I've been wanting to do this one for a while. It's pretty easy. It's also, you know, an easy way to add chocolate to things and stuff like that. But yeah, pretty cool. Uh, kind of fun. Thank you.